What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to Modern Filmmaker. In this video, we're going to be doing some frame blocking in DaVinci Resolve 16 to make this. If you guys like videos like this on transition, editing, audio, I definitely make sure to give this video a like so I know that you guys like it when I kind of go outside of the normal color grading. Um, and also, you know, transitions across the board are just sick, but one of the best transitions out there and just cool and natural is a block frame transition where something just comes across the screen that brings in the next scene or the next video clip. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump on into DaVinci Resolve 16 and get this started. So I've got a new project in DaVinci Resolve 16 and I've got our media right here on the left that I'm going to use and frame blocking is super simple um, and I, I feel like once you kind of understand the main concepts and kind of see a few different ways of doing it, it, it becomes something you can really throw into a lot of really cool situations uh, and you guys will see that throughout this edit. Now the first thing I'm going to do is pick my first clip um, which is this one right here of this product. Um, I just want a certain portion of it though. And I think right here I will hit I to mark in. And then right here I'll hit O for mark out. And I can just hit this video icon right here to drag in just the video portion of this clip. And one thing I'm going to go ahead and do is go to playback and proxy mode and go to half resolution just to get a little smoother playback. You could also create proxies with all these or generate optimized media. Um, I'm working with DNHR files, so th they're already going to run pretty smooth in DaVinci. I'm not really worried about it. Um, but those are some options. Uh, and next, I'm actually going to reverse this clip because I would kind of want it to start out of focus and then zoom into focus. Uh, it's just a little more compelling at the beginning of a video. So I'm going to right click and go to change clip speed and reverse speed. Now I'll move this back to the beginning, and voila. Okay, and because um, one thing that really helps with frame blocking and, and you know, whip pan transition uh, is music and the timing to the music. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag in the clip. Actually, I don't want the entire clip. I really just want a certain part of it. So I'm gonna double click on that to get the preview here. And I really, I think I just want a build. Um, where is the bill? I just want a quick, intense. There we go. All right, so let me find the beginning, hit I there, and I think I'll use it throughout. This track is so sick. I get a lot of my music. Um, I know this one is from NCS, No Copyright Sounds. They have a YouTube channel, they have a SoundCloud. Really cool place to find copyrighted and free music for free uh, for your videos. I'm gonna hit O here to mark that out and drag this right in. And now we have all of our music. And now this way we can just lay clips down and time everything uh, to the beat and get it all feeling really smooth as well as looking good. So here, I think I want this to, kind of starting exactly on a beat is so important. So I love to uh, hit the left and right arrows to kind of scan the beat and make sure I'm starting at the very beginning. So you guys will see me do that a few times in this video. Yeah, that's nice. I think we'll end it there. At that snare. Um, yep. Yeah. And the next clip is the first frame blocking clip we will we will be dragging in. And it is let's see. It's somewhere in here. Boom. It's right here, and that's the part I'm gonna use. Is this little edge of the decline bench. I think that's what that was. And so I'm gonna go before we can see it. Uh, because what we're trying to do, the frame blocking transition is, you know, just something 
obscuring your vision. So it doesn't make sense with everything. You kind of have to choose an object um, or, or, or a person or something, which we'll be using a person next. So we'll get into a lot of several ways, um, a lot of several <laughs> we'll get into a lot of different ways um, that you can you can use this uh, in a way where it comes off as smooth and not like what the heck was that so <clears throat> right here obviously it, it, it fades to black right here so I want to cut it where it's black and have this edge of the thing pass over so I'm gonna go to right before it enters the frame hit I and then let's see I'll play it out really beautiful shot underexposed but beautiful shot the idea was there <laughs> so I'm gonna drag this in on top because uh, ideally uh, one thing with the whip pans especially with music is you want the end of the action to happen uh, at the beat so if it's like one two three cut one two three cut it'd be like one two three transition cut you know what I mean so you kind of want to, boom, you know, one, two, three, and boom. You, know, you kind of want it to run in. Uh, <laughs> hope you guys are following that. But first, we'll need to remap our clip to get it to kind of wipe fast and then slow down uh, once it's uh, obscured the whole screen. So we'll right click, go to retime controls, retime curve, and let's say we want this to end. I will mute the audio for now. So it doesn't drive me crazy or you i think i want this to end right here right where he crunches his back that's a good time to to kind of close that off um so i'll hit a keyframe right here and then in this first one i will hit where it says 100 on this arrow down go to change speed and go all the way to 800. This, uh, you can't really do that on every single one depending on what's in the frame, but in this one, that is totally fine. Um, or in this situation. Uh, so at this point, boom. Da -da. See that? Oh, so smooth. Um, but one thing we can do is go right here to the keyframe we made and hit the ease button. Um, this is a little too wide. I want it to be a little more jarring, so I'm going to click at the end of this here and move it on in, which will give us a smooth but a little more punchy. Uh, there we go. I love that. And then turn the music back on to get this on time. Uh, 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 uh. So really, we know that our hit is here that we want to land on, so we'll just move the line right over the cursor. Or close to. Yeah. There it is, right there. Dun, dun, ba -da. Now we will go ahead and do our masking, which will really create the magic here. Um, and we'll do this really simply by going into the color tab. Um, I prefer to do this kind of masking in the color tab, bar none, over Fusion. You could also use Fusion to do this, but for me, it's just way faster um, and easier on the computer even because it kind of it seems like it has to go through less processes to get um, the overall uh, achievement done. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is right click on the background and add alpha output, and then I will add a new node at the end and connect this output here, and we'll create our mask in this last node. And I'm going to go to the preview window and try to find a place where we can see the old, what we're cutting out, and the new. And go to mask, and we will start masking. I will make a custom mask. And then click over here. What I'm trying to do here is stay along this line, parallel to this line here. So, and keep this line that way. The entire transition. So let's make these keyframes, masking it out, it looks good, boom, let's, uh, let's soften it to make it a little more real, and yeah, I like it. Maybe scoot it in a little bit, I mean obviously you wouldn't be masking the same shot, so 
doesn't matter all that much but <clears throat> yes so that will do and from now we'll go to the track window and go to frame instead of doing our normal track we will go to frame and make our own tracking data for DaVinci to kind of go off of and we'll make a keyframe here and then I will use the left and right arrows on the keyboard to go back and forward frames and first I'm just gonna start going back three frames let's say and I will squeeze this in to again where it is parallel with this line here and that looks pretty good and then I'll go back a few more frames and I could even just move this entire thing off the screen like this and then if I go forward frames you see it still still does a great job of trying to kind of interpret where I want it to go I'm just gonna move this and move this so we can line those uh, make sure that's parallel once again because you want it to make sense um, with whatever object you're using to do this with and I'll go forward a few keyframes and start tracking this forward about there and let's say right there and at this point we are out we're out of the screen but even in this last keyframe you still want to try to be parallel to uh, the object you are mimicking yeah kind of crazy but it's also kind of dope let's check this out in the edit tab yes and one thing we could do that would make this just a little more quality is move the soft down actually one thing you definitely want to make sure to do go to the tracking uh, window and go to clip um, because if you are on the frame button where you make your own tracking data and you change the softness there it will kind of add that almost as if you're keyframing um, the entire window itself uh, so with clip on it will allow you to make changes to the overall mask um, that will go ahead and you know stay that way throughout all your keyframes so now I can move this down and maybe move this on the inside a little more Yes, and that is Yes, that's beautiful So let me hit B here and get our next clip ready On this hit right here, I'm going to hit B for our razor tool Click this clip and I'm gonna go actually I'm gonna delete this or hit backspace and go back to this clip and just go further along in this clip to where this guy right here is like ah i love it that's so epic ah i just couldn't get any more epic um and then this guy just comes along it's like he knew what kind of music i was going to use uh so i'm going to hit i to mark in go to the end whenever he comes into focus i'll mark out drag just uh, hit the video icon drag this in I'm gonna get rid of all this by right-clicking going to retime curves and controls and let's see what do we want to start this think about right here yes I may make that a little longer Yeah, I'm going to start on this beat instead. It's a little smoother. Alright, and I want this to really come into focus a lot faster because I don't have much time. We're going to end this one right here. So we got to get 
Yeah, that's good. And uh, one thing I can do to make this a little more intense is do a little keyframe zoom. So if I go to the end of this clip, uh, or the beginning, and hit the zoom keyframe, and then go to the end, and actually let me go back to the beginning. I'll make one in the position as well at the very beginning. Then go to the end, zoom in pretty far, and kind of position it to where he's the focal point. Yeah, that's sick. It's a little too fast, but if we just bring this down a little, like to, yep, right there. Should be really smooth. Yeah, that's intense. And you know what? I may want to follow that trend with this shot right here. So I'm going to hit the zoom at the beginning of this one, and at the end, I'm going to move this in too. But it's going to be slower. It's not going to be as intense. Yeah. And it just like keeps happening. <laughs> it's so intense. It's almost comically intense. But that's that's totally fine with me. It's that kind of video for sure. Um, and then the next clip is going to be another, uh, this is going to be a much more kind of complicated, but, you know, not really that that complicated. But this one's with a person, so it's definitely going to be a little more intense. Uh, let me find the shot I'm looking for. Let's see. Right here. <clears throat> and it's of these girls walking off. They're like, you know what? We're going to do our own thing. Screw you boys in your row contest. We're girls. And there's three of us. And we are... The Powerpuff Girls. All right, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this, but um, I kind of started a joke and then just it just went nowhere. All right, so we'll need this is the guy right here that we are going to have block the frame, and he moves his head in the middle of the shot, and that's going to make it tough. If he just stayed still, that would have been awesome, but he didn't. So uh, we'll have to do some keyframing and get around that, but it'll be pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to hit I at the very beginning before you can see him. And then I'm going to go down to about right here and hit, oh, that's all I'll need of this clip for now. And where do I want this one to start? Right at this snare hit before the next snare hit. Yep. Dun, dun. So we dun, dun, and oh, there we go. So I'm going to do uh, our typical retiming, retime controls, retime curves, and then make a keyframe. Let's get past this guy and let me mute this. Let me get past this guy, like right there. Then we can come back into normal time or slow-mo. So I'm going to go to the first half of this clip, click and change speed 400 I was shooting at uh, 90 no 120 frames a second so that's about four times speed yeah sick we'll smoothen this out with by hitting the keyframe and then hitting the ease button and ooh, we'll make it a little more jarring than that though because you know that's gonna land on a beat so you know we can even make that faster we can go all the way up to 800. Let's do it. Let's just go big or go home. And I'm already, I'm already home. So I guess I just have to go big at this point. Yeah. Plus you won't see him because they'll be blocked out behind this guy until they get to the other side of him. And that's where it slows down. So it's perfect. It's perfect. And that's the kind of stuff you want to look for. Um, <laughs> and now with the music, does this fall on time? That's the big question. Nope. So we'll be starting this one a little early, but that's alright. So I'm going to go to where this clip ends, right where that snare hit is. Let me zoom in. And... Go like right there. And you know what? Screw it. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to hit this keyframe. Push this up. And you can speed up what you're trying to do there speed up this first half
yeah, speed it up a good bit. And then I'll just move this back. That way it makes the whole thing shorter. Then go back to this other half and just go to 100. And I'll got to spread this first section out a little bit. It's not as bad. I can even start it on this frame, since that's the first one that he comes in to frame on. And... Boom. So now, I can move this white line here on top of our cursor. And... Dun, dun. That's exactly what we want. Alright, now let's go create our mask. In the color panel, let's do this. This is getting real now. The owner of this company does not know that I'm making this video, so it's like a double excitement because after this he'll see it and be like, what? Where did this come from? I'll be like, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Um, so, uh, <laughs> once again, we're going to right click, add alpha output, connect this last node to the alpha output. That way we can, I, I do this with the last node, that way I can color correct, color grade, anything I want in uh, all this space before that, um, but we'll still get the same mask and none of the stylistic Grading or correcting will affect the mask because uh, it's the last thing in the channel. So with that there, we'll need to start masking Mr. Guy out. So I'm going to jump to a point where he's more prominent. That way we can make enough keyframes and then go back and forth from there. Uh, so right here, I'm going to go to the mask, uh, the power window tab, make a custom power window. I'm going to start with his nose. And let me see. That should do it. Get the back end and then come in on his shirt. I just want to make a mask around this front side of him. And then over time, I'll extend this mask to reveal the whole shot as he goes across the screen. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty simple, but it's it's kind of not. See, now it's all coming together. See the shot behind him? Now it is all coming together. <laughs> if we just soften this a little bit, it hopefully won't look as completely crazy. Yeah, that actually, come on guys, come on, and girls. Like, I've got probably three girl subscribers, so... Y'all three, y'all three are holding it down. That looks pretty stinking good. I'm going to push this mask towards the inside a little bit. And that'll just, that'll just help with some, some things here and there. You know what I'm saying? Move this, move this. And save real fast because that's smart. And go to the tracker. And I'm going to make a uh, frame, make a keyframe, and then go back and start tracking backwards. So I'm going to hold shift and drag and click everything. Um, and that way I can move all these keyframes back. And it'll save me a lot of time. I'll have to go one by one, even though I still kind of have to go one by one. It won't take me nearly as long. Smooth these out. And let's see. See this isn't so bad. It doesn't take that long. It's really it's really pretty sick, and it's worth it because, you know, people be like, what? Dang. Where did that come from? And let's do some more tracking. Go back, hold shift. It already made the keyframe from the last one. So pull this back and click outside of this box so we can go individually here one by one. This is where he changes position. He kind of turns his face mid shot, which is really, 
unfortunate for me, but if we make it work, then it's just going to look better. I mean, most of the time with video, the more time you spend on it, the better your final result. So, I'm just trying to ramble to give myself more time to mask. <laughs> Um, let's see, his shirt's right there, chin's right here, that's awesome, that's awesome, you guys make sure to like this video, by the way, please, <laughs> I appreciate that, uh, let's see what that looks like, yeah, that looks good, looks good enough, you gotta remember, this is gonna be flying across the screen, so let's go back, um, we can go all the way back here, even, I I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try this. Sometimes, just like we did in that other one, even with faces, you can skip a couple frames and get away with it. So, let's... Right arrow, right arrow. That's not bad. Like, because it's a tutorial, I'm going to leave it just like that. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to leave it just like what you're seeing there. Um, but we need to finish the ending. So... Select, come up here, and let's even, yeah. This is as quick and dirty as it gets, but that's totally fine. So, let's spruce this up here. We don't want it to look like complete trash. I mean, we do have a reputation to uphold, for goodness sakes. And, yep, this is looking better. Glad I did that. That almost ended up being shameful. And this last one here, select all, almost all. And now it's going to start getting dirty. Now it's going to start getting dirty. Dirty as can be. Okay. And. Yeah. Not perfect. Not. Perfect. I mean. Not even great. But. Doable. Let's get this stuff out of the way here. And you guys get it. The more time you spend keyframing the better your mask will look. And of course, once color graded, that will help with a lot of the shadows not blending together. Obviously, uh, the light spectrum in this shot just looks different than the light spectrum in this shot. But, okay, hold on. Hold on, let me just at least go and crank the inside a little bit. That way, you know. You know. That way, you know. Boom. And then I'm going to hit B, cut that there. And I'm going to go further down this clip. I'm just going to hit backspace, get rid of it for now. Come back to it in the preview window, the media pool, and go right here. I'm going to go a little further down the line. Just a little further down the line. And now we'll drag this in. Alright, so with this clip in here, let's go ahead and take a look. You know what? I think the only thing I want to do differently is just make the timing at the beginning a little longer. Yeah. Like this. Scoot all this over. That way you have a little more time on the product. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Yep. 
And of course, one thing you can do, which always makes a, uh, a block frame transition better, is a swoosh sound. Um, so I'm gonna drag in, uh, let's just say this one right here. Yeah. So sick. So sick already, like that's all it takes. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's dope. Maybe turn it up a little bit. Yeah, and then grab this one right here. Yep, turn this one up. Now it's getting real epic. I mean, you throw in some sound effects, dude, it changes everything. Oh, yeah, this is about to get crazy. All right, so let's retime this clip real fast. And right click, retime controls, retime curve. Keyframe, speed up the second half to, let's see what 400 looks like. No, it's not intense enough. Let's go to 800. And, oh yeah, this is actually perfect. I'm going to move all this down by like one or two frames. Yeah. And... I'm going to click the keyframe and then click the ease button. Yes. And we'll go to this foot here. I'm going to mute the track and go to the color tab so we can mask out where this foot comes across the screen and things can start getting awesome. So uh, I'll start like right, right there is fine. So as always, I will right click, add alpha output, uh, alt S, make a new node, throw it to the end, attach to the alpha output and make our custom mask. Let's see, it's about like that probably, a shoe. Whoops. Get your life together, Marcel. Get it together. Um, I'm going to go and soften this. Actually, I'll wait to soften it. I'm going to mask it uh, or track it first. And so I'll go to the track window, frame, make a keyframe, and work my way back a little ways. And in this situation, it's going to be so easy that I'm just going to do it by hand anyway. No need to grab all of them, get all complex. Because two keyframes back, and now we're already out of the woods. So, boom, boom. We got this one more up here. And. Boom. Very simple mask. I love that. I love when masks are easy. There's nothing like life when masks are easy. And now we can just move this entirely off screen. And we can now soften to make it a little more realistic. And let's throw this on the inside as we do. And that already looks a lot better. Oh, uh, but what did I do? What did I do, people? I didn't click the clip button. Control Z, all this soft craziness. Gotta undo, go to the tracking window, clip. Now I'll go back and I can soften to my heart's desire. And it'll soften every keyframe. Beautiful. Get all the stuff out of the way. And <clears throat> add our next clip, which is going to be this beautiful revealing clip of these girls doing their thing on the ellipticals. This girl's totally photobombing. Totally. She's like, hey, cameraman. I, do you guys ever get tired of telling people 
Don't just. I'm not here. I'm totally not here. All right, I'm gonna start right here. Boom. Yeah, this is a good shot. Yeah, she's like, I'm just getting my fitness on at the elliptical, trying to burn those cows at the elliptical. You know, you know how it is. You know, she's getting her beauty on at the elliptical. So go to the end of this. Right, right when that foot comes in, throw this in the background. There it is. Oh, are you serious? Should we play it back with the audio? I feel like um, we need to, but maybe we should just throw a swoosh in there preemptively um, in hopes that we did the right thing. Let's let's get our swoosh on real fast. I'm gonna hold Alt, click this first swoosh because we're just gonna alternate swooshes. You know, it. You know. Swishes are easy to find, but I only have two of them right here for some reason. Yep. It's cool. Alright. Oh, God. It's dirty. Oh, so what are we going to do now? We have got to... I love that it's like slow. But right here, we gotta speed things up. Right click, retime, retime curves, keyframe it. Speed up the second half to 400. Oh, are you serious? Okay, let's click this keyframe here, um, hit the ease button. And let's shorten this, because I don't want it to be too smooth, but I want it to be a little smoother. Oh, that's sick. That's sick. And it's okay to say what you're doing is sick. Don't let anybody stop you. That's your, that's your job. That's your goal. If you're not saying this is sick, then you, you're not doing something right. You got to get to where you're like, this is sick. No way. Are you kidding me? That's the kind of responses you want from yourself out of your own stuff. Um, yep. All right. So from here, I am. I think I'm going to make this a little more interesting by doing another zoom technique, but this time I'm going to go out. So at the end, I'm going to make a keyframe on the zoom. And at the very beginning, I'm going to come in to like 1.1. 20. Oh, yes, that's sick. All right, I'm going to go even further to 1.200 because the camera's actually moving closer to her throughout this animation or throughout this clip. But um, we're zooming out, so it, it creates a really... Yeah, that's sick. And right here... We are going to go into the last clip, which is quite a doozy. Um, let's see. We've got the girls on the thing, running their thing. And then we have, somewhere in here, we have a deadlifter just going ham. And we're going to get this one at right here. And this one is going to be the simplest, like, the simplest way to make a block frame wipe transition. This is, this is it right here. It doesn't work with every situation, of course, but, because that, that's just life. Of course, it's just, doesn't work with everything, but it works with some situation. And in those situations where it works, you're like, yes, yes, this is going to take me like three seconds. Um, so, of course, you want to retime the clip. Uh, so I think, uh, let me right click, right, retime control, retime curves. I think I want this to come in at, um, let me mute this because I don't want to drive y'all crazy with the music. Yeah, I think like right here, just right there is fine. Keyframe. I'm going to speed this first one up to... 800. Second one. I'm going to switch this up to normal speed. 
400. Because this is, again, I shot this at 120 frames a second. So if you didn't do that, then you don't need to do all this. You really just need to do the, uh, the initial remapping. Because I want it to come in really fast and then go down to normal speed. But the trick here, the trick here in this instance is, let me shrink this, is you actually want to blend with this. Let me turn the music on so we can know where we're coming in at. About right here. And then I'm going to add a additive dissolve. Tricky business here, ladies and gentlemen. Tricky business. Tricky business, because this is cheap, but it is effective. See what I'm saying there? You can make that a little smaller. And you really get a lot of the same effect. Let's watch it back from a few clips before then. See, that's sick, right? It's like, it, it gives you that same almost effect, but it's almost more impactful because it has that flash too. But I wouldn't want to do that in the first one. Like in the first one, everything's Gucci. So it's like, you know, I like that this object comes in. I like that the guy comes in. I love that the beat is hot. Alright, so what would I do here? I'm going to right click, retime controls, retime curves. Now that we've figured out that last one, mute this audio track uh, to save my brain. And I need to slow this down. So what I'm going to do is make another keyframe here. Boom. Like right where he sits into that, I want that to hit on the last beat I want to hit. So I'm going to make a keyframe there. I'm going to slow this down to 100. And I'm going to actually slow. I'm going to pull this down to slow down his pulling up because it was a little too quick. And if I turn the music back on. Almost. Almost. That's okay, though. I can click the bottom of this to get out to here. And we should look pretty good. Right there. That's where I want it. Let's not get crazy. Boom. And that's just that's just musical timing. You know what I mean? And you can hang on this shot for I love it. I love that. That is sick. That is sick. That is sick. I hope you guys stuck in here. If you guys stuck in there with me, and I mean, come on. This was a good one though. Jeez. Guys, if you liked it, please give it a like. I mean, if you liked it, you might as you might as well. And if you didn't like it, definitely like it anyway. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comment section. If you guys like videos on stuff like this, editing, um, audio, let me know. You know, it doesn't have to be a coloring channel. It doesn't have to be a one thing channel. This is the modern filmmaker. We're modern filmmakers. Let's modern film make across the board. And as always guys, my name is Marcel and this has been the Modern Filmmaker and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.